Good morning. This is a recording for the message that will be this Sunday, October the 16th. And in our service, as, you, as we do every week, we will sing Ferris Lord Jesus. So we always have four hymns. The first one is Ferris Lord Jesus, one of my favorites. Another is How Firm a Foundation is Laid for Your Faith in His Excellent Word. That is the base of our faith, the Word of God. Then we will sing Jesus Calls Us, which is our response to the Word of God. And then I will sing the wondrous story. If your church doesn't sing the wondrous story, not that particular song, but if they're not telling the story of Jesus and they're telling you how to live a successful life, you need to dig a little deeper than that. The scriptures are not given to us to tell us how to be successful entrepreneurs. It's told how to how to be right with God. There are practical things in the scriptures, but be sure your church is not just telling everybody what they want to hear and how wonderful they are. And uh, That's not the scripture. The scripture says sinners come to Christ just as they are, and that is without one plea. And many of our hymns remind us of that. And this one does too. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. How he left his place in heaven, and he died on Calvary. That is what you must always remember. You will fail many, many times, morally and otherwise. You are a failure in your own heart, because that's where sin originates. But you must remember the good news of the gospel. We turn to Christ, and our worship on Sundays is to remind us particularly of that wonderful grace. And in that grace, we go out to live if we're successful, fine. If we're not, fine. As long as we're right with God, this will turn out well. So, then I will have four scripture readings. Psalm 119, 1 through 8. John 6, 41 to 63. Colossians 3, 1 through 17. And Luke 14, 25 to 32. And the title of this message is Counting the Cost. So let's pray before we go any further. Lord, we thank you for your words that do not change. We thank you that the Holy Spirit has put it in our hearts to seek you, to want to love you, to want to receive your love, to put away all fears of all things in this life and to walk in the newness of life with you. Lord, we pray especially for Bunny Rector. This week who has buried her Dear husband of 68 years, have mercy on her. You love widows. Your scripture says that true religion involves being kind to widows and orphans. So we know that is your heart. So, Father, have mercy on Bunny as she must figure out how to live now. After all these years, and sweet Bill took care of her. Be kind, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. The world watched Vladimir Putin as he arrogantly pitched his Russian army into the Ukraine to annex large portions back to Russia. His soldiers surrounded Ukraine and then marched in, thinking they would make quick work of taking what they wanted. But, surprise, it seems the Ukrainians would have other ideas. They would rather fight to the death than to live under Russian rule. On September the 21st, Putin announced he's recalling 300,000 reservists to active duty. The Ukrainian military has claimed to have killed or wounded 50,000 Russian military personnel. Since the start of the invasion, and Putin is running short of volunteers. National Public Radio said last week that all commercial planes leaving Russia are filled to capacity mainly with young men. Russia shut down the rails so no reservists could flee out of the country. Thousands are trying to dodge this latest draft into Putin's madness. It seems many young men are not anxious to die in a war that makes no sense to them at all. Putin is paying a cost, a cost he did not foresee. He failed to count the cost of going to war. Jesus says to all who would follow him, if you sign up, it will cost you. There is a price to be paid. 
Never let it be said that Jesus misled anyone into becoming his devoted follower. His words here in this text, Luke fourteen twenty five to 32 offer us several powerful thoughts. The first one is that true religion is costly. It is a costly thing. A saving relationship with Jesus Christ has its price. Salvation from sin and eternal life are free to all who truly embrace Jesus as the Son of God risen from the dead and the only Savior of sinners and confess him openly before the world. The price for the salvation that you will receive was paid by Jesus' blood. So the cost that you're going to pay has nothing to do with gaining your salvation. That's been paid by the blood of Jesus. But if you take that salvation, it will cost you dearly is the point. You must be a new man. Think of the man born blind who sat begging every day. When Jesus healed him, he could no longer beg. His entire way of life changed immediately. Now he will have to learn a trade. He'll have to get a job. He'll have to provide for himself. He has no skills. He can no longer expect his family to assist him. He's healthy now. He's no longer allowed to beg. In many ways, his life just got harder. Now he's also responsible for seeing the evil around him in ways that he did not have to see when he was blind. I read about a man who made a lot of money selling drugs, and then he was converted to faith in Jesus Christ. Now he can no longer make money in ways that harm his fellow man. He bears the name of Jesus. He has a new loyalty. His life cannot include easy money acquired from illegal activity. When you come to Christ, you begin to learn and conform yourself to the values of Jesus Christ. No longer can you do what you want to do, nor disregard your fellow man. The second of the greatest commandments is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, there's a great deal of difference between hospice and assisted suicide. Hospice has the goal of easing a person's suffering unto death, not creating it, but it gives them palliative care so that you can die without great agony. But, but you die on your own term. You die when the Lord says it's time. Hospice is a distinctly Christian movement. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, most every uh, health benefit company or organization, such as a hospital or an orphanage, were started by believers all over the world. Everywhere Christianity goes, the lot of man becomes better. Why is that? Because God says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And you can't be killing your neighbor. You can't assist in suicide just because they want to die. Doctors take the Hippocratic Oath that they will do no harm. That grows out of distinct Christian faith, Christian values set out in the Holy Scriptures. We're not allowed to do that. To, to help people to die. Many of you remember Mother Teresa, who spent her life in India. Mother Teresa used to go daily into the streets and pick up the discarded babies. The women had their babies. They didn't want them. They put them out. For whatever reason, she did that because she knows that God is a premium on life. God is the one who makes children, and children are precious. Our Lord Jesus said, "Precious, our, our Lord Jesus said, bring the children to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven." 
And he says, whoever leads one of these little ones astray and does him harm, it's better for him that he should never have been born. And so the Christian church and believers value life. Mother Teresa also said, why do we think the world, why are we surprised at what the world is doing when mothers can kill their own babies? Such an unnatural act. So unnatural. Men and women are supposed to cherish the children. And when we become believers, we do all we can to preserve life, to make it better. And we cannot participate in that which destroys wantonly life. When you come to Jesus, you are now engaged in a lifelong pursuit to make your life pleasing to Christ. When you get up in the morning, I hope you will make it your discipline to say, Lord, I don't know what you have set out for me this day. Whatever it is, good or bad, let me remember you are in all of it and that I must respond to it as you would. Give me the strength, Father, to live this day so that when I lay my head down tonight, I will not be ashamed of myself before you. You are now in a civil war with evil when you become a Christian, especially the evil that comes from within you. First John calls this evil the lust of the flesh, that is the great desires for physical pleasure, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are not our friends. These desires are hostile to God. We must strive to be holy dedicated in all our being to loving God. And that's the essence of holiness, loving God. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So you're not free to be yourself when you come to Christ. You're free to belong to Christ. And he will make you different. But you must enter into the struggle, into the war, to put away evil. Real faith in Christ Jesus will last. There are cheaper versions that don't last. There are knockoffs, as it is. When Lucy and I were in uh, China many years ago, and we walked on the Great Wall of China, we needed to buy some batteries for our camera. And, of course, the Chinese, never missing an opportunity, had little stations along the way where you could buy batteries. I bought some batteries. We put them in the camera. They took two pictures, and they quit. Those are knockoff batteries. Those are rip-off batteries. Uh, just to finish the story completely, I took the batteries back and I said, these are defective. I want my money back. And they said, no, no, no. We're not giving your money back. Period. Bye. I said, okay. I'm going up on the wall and I'm going to find the policeman. I'm going to bring him back and I'm going to tell him how you cheated me. They pitched a fit and then they gave me my money back. They really didn't want to be confronted by the police who already knew that they were ripping off the public. There are artificial versions of the Christian faith. Any Christian faith that does not make you long for the person of Christ to be your own character, it doesn't make you wish to put away sin, is not real Christianity. It will not save you when you close your eyes in death. It will not. Because when the Holy Spirit comes into you, he changes you. Real faith, real religion will cost you. The cheaper versions don't help. I remember a young businessman who had shown great interest in knowing Christ. And then he told me, he and I used to talk about it. Then he told me several weeks later, after our discussion, that he had found a church that, and here's his quote, let you get drunk, do a little carousing and immorality, and have a good time. And that's the church he wanted to go to. Well, pretty short-sighted. That man's religion is worthless. A true relationship with Jesus costs you the love of sin. It requires you to put away evil, not embrace it. Christ died for our sins. We must learn to hate them and to do right and to do good in its place. Jesus' message here is one of self-denial. 
It is a renunciation of my own will in order to dedicate myself to the will of God. Cheap religion always shows its colors. It has no self-denial, no forsaking of evil, no giving up habits that are wrong in God's eyes. So what does Jesus say is the particular cost? Well, there's three parts of the cost that Jesus said. You must love him more than you love any other person in the world. That's something you learn to do in humility as you live before Christ, who has pardoned all your sins. And you come to realize just how much God has done for you. Thankfulness and thanksgiving will give rise to love. There are many around the world who would be Christians if their families would approve of them. No, you've got to love Christ more and pay the price. Then there's a second part, which is to deny myself by seeking to walk in the ways of God written in Scripture. Those are unnatural. The ways of God are unnatural to us. We must learn them in Scripture. For instance, forgive others no matter what they have done to you. You may still pursue legal action, but forgiving of them means that you've taken vengeance out of your own hands and put it into the hands of God. We must forgive. That's hard. I hear many people, and I, I, I don't blame them. I worry for them, who say, I will never forgive so-and-so. If I live a million years, and if I die, I'll follow them into hell. Well, that's, that may be where you end up, because Jesus said, unless you forgive others their sins against you, your Heavenly Father will not forgive you yours. What a price to pay. You see, that is what we must learn, deny ourselves. So love him more than you love any other person in the world. Deny yourself and walk in the ways of God. And the final part of the price we pay is to forsake all that I have. Hold on to nothing more than Christ. Everything you have is in service to God who gives it to you. Yes, it's yours to use, yours to enjoy. But how are you using what you have, including your health, your mind, your influence with others? How are you using those for the love of God? To summarize then this first truth, true religion is a costly thing. And then the second truth in this text is this. Whatever the cost of discipleship, it is worth it. Here's the question Jesus asked that reflects the worth of true religion of which God approves. What will the profit a man if he gains the whole world yet loses his own soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? Certainly, there's no family relationship worth your soul. There's no approval of a boss or other students. That is worth your soul. No amount of money, no amount of pleasure, no amount of friends or approval from the wicked is worth your soul. When you are face to face with God at the great day when he separates those who love him from those who don't, you will never regret anything you lost or gave up in order to be with Jesus. You'll never regret it. You have loved Jesus more than these. You will see. You will say. You will know. As Jesus said to Peter, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, I do love you. Help my unbelief and the lack of love that I have in my heart so often. So I hope that you'll bear these words in mind. I hope that you'll read those scriptures again. From uh, Luke 14, great chapter. True religion is costly, but it's always worth the price because your soul hangs in the balance and there's nothing worth your soul. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love. And at just the right time, you sent Jesus Christ to die for sinners. And that is us. We readily confess it because we know your love is for sinners. 
and that you will transform us into the likeness of your dear Son in due season. That is our goal. We wish it because you put it in our hearts. Lord, be merciful. Let these words of your scripture fall on hard hearts and break them, fall on sad hearts and encourage them, that in all things you may have the glory of the one who loves sinners. Father, have mercy on our country. It seems we've lost our way. It seems that all we want is what we want in our own pleasure, and that that's the purpose of government, and that's the purpose of laws. And yet you know it is not, for lawless men need the law. The law is made for the ungodly. Lord, give us wisdom. Give us leaders over us, political leaders, who fear you more than they fear the mob. We ask for this mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're coming on Sunday, uh, if you, I hope you'll, I hope you'll come back. We've had a rash of COVID that's kept out a number of our members. We've had members moving away. I feel everyone who's not there anymore. We've had a number of deaths. We are a real congregation. We care about each other. We pray for each other. We nurture each other. You can't get that just staying at home watching. And you can't give it just staying at home watching. So I hope you'll come back.